Often we look at other people and wonder how they get it all done, then reflect on our own days or weeks and question where all the time has gone. Well, as we all know, everyone has the same 24 hours in each day, but we all use them differently, some more productively than others. So what is productivity? It's literally the calculation of your outputs over your inputs. So productive people are getting more out of each input, out of every day. So what are the inputs? Well, there are three. Productivity comes from one, focus, the undivided attention you give a task. Two, time, the time you put into a task. And three, energy, the speed or efficiency at which you complete your task. So how do you maximize productivity given this? Well, really it all comes down to habits, forming and staying true to productive habits that help you to get the most out of every day. In this vlog, I am gonna share with you nine of my favorite productivity tips and habits. Don't be under any illusion that I managed to stick to all nine of these all of the time, we all waver, but each has been beneficial to me at some stage of my life or other. If you do have other tips that are working for you, please do also comment under the video too, so I and other viewers can also benefit. All right, productivity tip one. Start the day strong, the miracle morning is the real deal. Having a solid morning routine that gets you pumped for the day is crucial for entrepreneurs, particularly those that need to do work that is creative or requires critical thinking, which is pretty much all of us. The mornings are the best time of day as your brain has been reset and you're in the optimal time to set up your day for success. You're well rested, hopefully, and can maximize your output and creative flow. Keep the tedious tasks for later in the day. So what I love is the six minute miracle morning. Apart from the fact it only takes six minutes, which is great, it's very easy to do and it's a habit that's built quickly. If you do have more time in the morning, then you can also increase the time you spend on each of the minute long tasks to suit your needs. It's a true mind, body, soul activity, which puts you in a great mental space for the day. So here's what it is. Minute one is spent in silence being mindful and finding relaxation before the hustle and bustle of the day takes over. Minute two, you say your affirmations out loud. A powerful way to take back control is to use I am statements. I am in charge of my own life. I am reaching my goals and expanding my potential and so on and so forth. You can write these down and recite them or come up with new ones every day that feel good and empower you. Minute three is all about visualization. Spend time visualizing how you want that day to play out, focusing on setting up the day for success here. Visualize your ideal day, visualize reaching your goals. Then minute four is about scribing. You can journal on the goals you've achieved, write down a list of the things you're grateful for, or you can write down and then commit your, to the actions that you're going to do that day. Minute five is reading. This is one or two pages or a blog from something that inspires you or teaches you something. A book recommendation here is Tribe of Mentors. Short life advice from the best in the world or Tools of Titans is also great. The tactics and habits of, I think it's billionaires, world-class performers, A, A plus students. Both of these are Tim Ferriss. So if you haven't checked him out yet, do, <laughs> because you absolutely should be following some of his advice too. Okay, then minute six. It's for exercise. Don't knock this one. It's super important to get the blood flowing and to get you going, even if it is only a minute you can commit. So do some jumping jacks, push-ups, whatever you can to get your heart rate going. And then you're set for the day in just six minutes. If you do want to read more about how to actually implement this for yourself, you can check out the book as well on Amazon. Um, I'll also post a link to it in the description and on the blog under this video. Okay, so you know you'll realize that no part of my morning routine suggests that you have to get up at the crack of dawn to be productive. Because I just don't want to. <laughs> Which leads me on to productivity tip two. Find your own groove, the daily routine that works for you. So successful people start the day at 5 a.m. Have you heard that before? I have, and you know, if it comes naturally to you, amazing. But for me, I have never been able to drag myself out of bed in the dark and launch myself happily into my morning routine. But what I can do is focus hard from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. each night. While everyone else is sleeping, there's no emails coming in and no distractions. So here's the thing. We all need to stop being influenced 
by what other people deem to be success or the habits of highly successful people. And when it comes to your daily routine, just find the time, the groove and the activities that work best for you as an individual. Find when you are most productive, most positive and most creative. Listen to your body and then just build your day around that. Then just relax into it. This entrepreneurship thing is meant to be fun after all. Productivity tip three, use your time effectively. Free time is extra time. There are hours of our day that can be reutilized in a productive, thought-provoking fashion. For example, is your commute to work taking two hours out of your day every day? Rather than sitting there mindlessly scrolling through your phone or through Facebook, why not use that time to listen to a podcast, a lecture, or catch up on the latest industry news, even brainstorm ideas, write recordings, write notes, optimize the time you spend, and maximize that daily creative flow. A couple of podcasts you should definitely check out. The Tim Ferriss Show, as you can see, I'm riding a Tim Ferriss wave right now. Also, Lewis Howe's School of Greatness, both an amazing audio book and podcast. Or instead of listening, you could use this time for creation. So you could use the voice recorder on your phone to just brainstorm your ideas uh, or a transcript app that will turn your voice into text, which is great, and create a written doc for you. One I like is Dragon Anywhere by Nuance Communication. You just hit record and it transcribes your conversation for you. Productivity tip four, time block your tasks and resist the urge to multitask. <laughs> so, instead of doing three things at once, which we all get the urge to do and then never finish any of them, rather block off time for certain tasks and complete them one at a time. You will feel and be much more accomplished and your focus is just much better when it's uninterrupted than when you, than when you attempt to multitask. <laughs> we all think we can multitask, but we definitely don't. So Elon Musk is a prime example of this time blocking. He actually breaks his day down into five minute increments this way, he doesn't have time to waste on procrastination or, you know, anything else, really. I think five minute blocks is perhaps a little over the top, taking it a bit far. But you can still use this tactic and adjust it for your needs. So here's how. Divide your day into blocks. Could be blocks of an hour, of half an hour, 20 minutes, or whatever works, you know, what makes sense for you. Each block has one task allocated to it, and you stick to this. You don't get distracted until you finish that task. You have other ideas. If you have them as they come up, just make an ideas list. You know, unexpected things happen when you're creative and in flow, things pop up, but put it on a later list. I just manage this process in Gmail. My calendar has exactly what I need to do each day and I do my best to stick to it. Okay, if you wanna read a bit more on that idea, there's also a book um, called 15 Secrets Successful People Know About Time Management the productivity habits of, again, highly successful students, entrepreneurs, billionaires. All right, productivity tip five, deadlines. <laughs> we thought deadlines were over in school. While we usually think of stress as a bad thing, a manageable level of self-imposed stress can actually be helpful in terms of giving us focus and helping us meet our goals. Try giving yourself a deadline and then stick to it. You might be surprised to discover just how focused and productive you can be when you're racing against the clock, even a self-imposed clock. If you do find it hard to hold yourself accountable, sometimes as solo entrepreneurs, it's really easy to just move the target and no one will ever know. I get that. So write it down and share it with your team, your friends or your partner. I like to use Asana to plan out projects and tasks. You can input deadlines, share with your friends and colleagues, collaborate inside the, the app, it reminds you which tasks are overdue. Um, you can even make notes in each project or task to keep track of where you're at. At the Growth Academy, we're a virtual team and we use the free version of Asana to communicate, collaborate and stay on top of tasks. So it's definitely worth checking out. Productivity tip six, take breaks to recoup. So it might sound counterintuitive, hopefully not, but taking scheduled breaks can actually help improve concentration and ultimately your productivity. Not if it's the only tip you take away from this vlog, but when you're running fast, you do need to stop to get your breath. It's the same when you're working. 
fast. <laughs> These breaks shouldn't be too long, they don't need to be too long. Short five minute breaks in between long tasks will do the trick. Reward yourself when you've completed something. You know, have a five minute get up and move, walk around the block, walk around your office, get that creative flow back. Get out of your immediate environment too. Take a walk outside as I mentioned, go into the garden, be in nature. It's worth a try. A desktop app that is really good for this is called Awareness. It's a non-intrusive app that simply goes off every hour or as specified uh, with the sound of a gong to remind you that you should take a break. Productivity tip seven, stay focused, don't let emails take over. On average, an entrepreneur spends two to three hours every day on email. Now add to that managing a Facebook inbox, Instagram inbox, LinkedIn inbox, perhaps a messenger chatbot also. Your whole day can literally be taken up by this admin. So instead, in line with the time blocking tip, put aside a specific time or two times each day to respond to emails and check social media. And do not check your inbox at other times throughout the day. This will allow you to focus 100% on your emails during the time that you have allocated so you'll get through your responses more quickly and not let them creep into your other hours that really should be focused instead on revenue generating activities like sales or product development. A tool I love for this is called Inbox When Ready. It literally hides your inbox from you so you cannot see how many emails are coming in and also tells you how many times you've checked your in inbox each day and for how long in total. That keeps you honest. And another great tool for staying focused as well, more generally, if it's email or blogs or cat videos that are your temptation, uh, this tool is a Chrome extension called Stay Focused. What it does is it blocks certain sites from your browser for certain times of the day. So you set it up. You can choose which websites you want to block during which times of the day. So you, know, you aren't tempted to jump onto Facebook or Netflix <laughs> at a time when you're trying to work. Now in a similar vein, productivity tip eight. Change how you communicate. Move from emails to Slack. So as I mentioned, we're checking our emails two, three hours a day, roughly 15 times per day, spending a huge amount of time both reading and replying, which is a massive chunk of our productive time each day gone. And a large proportion of that is also just emails between team members or freelancers and co-founders you're working with, people you engage with daily to keep your business running. And the thing is, writing emails is like writing a letter, which is absurd for people that you're communicating with every day, where the context, the pleasantries, and the embellished language we often fall into in email is frankly unnecessary and a total waste of time. So here's how you save hours. Move from email to Slack. Set up a Slack account, it's free, and get your entire team on it. Create channels within Slack for each key program you're working on or for different teams. So it could be one for social media marketing, one for product development, and one for competitive research. And it's always nice to have a fun channel too. And then just start sending short, sharp messages directly to your team through there. All of that is easy <laughs> and it's a huge time saver. But here's the hard part. You then need to stop emailing. Don't just add Slack as an additional channel. Go onto Slack and then challenge you and your team to only communicate on Slack. And then it will quickly become second nature for you. Productivity tip nine, organize your space. Declutter your life and your brain. So this tip probably comes the least naturally to me. I'm a generally messy person. I live in creative chaos. But I do know the stress of not being able to find things and the claustrophobia caused by clutter. Really, having everything decluttered, organized and in its place makes your workflow easier, quicker and less frustrating. Creating an office environment that is fun to be in and not overwhelming also boosts your work productivity and that of your team. So you can feng shui your desk for optimal energy flow and create a more supportive work environment in this way. A good desk placement would be to have your desk in the power position. This means having a clear view of the door from where you're seated. You should not be across from the door, but rather offside with nothing between you and the door. The least beneficial view would be one where you're facing a wall or a window. Sorry to tear you away from your view, but it can really hinder your outlook, stump the creative energy flow. And it also means your back is to the door usually, which means you can easily be taken by surprise. 
Also, aim to have power in your work environment. Facing a window is a distraction. It's easy to drift off into the outside world rather than staying true to your power and your focus. Having good lights is also super important. Natural light is preferable, but if you are working late at night or early morning, as I'm sure a lot of us are, then you at least need to make sure the light around your desk is good for focus. It contributes to a healthy feng shui too. You should have a desk lamp on the upper left corner of your desk because it is the wealth corner. Keep your desk organized and clutter free as well for ease of energy flow. If you want to dive more into Feng Shui, this is just a couple of quick tips I was sharing. Um, you can check out the Spruce, how to Feng Shui your desk. Um, I'll put the link again under this video and in the blog associated with it. So my final note on productivity. Just make sure you try different things and get a sense for what works for you and what doesn't. It takes 21 days, they say, to form a proper habit. So just pick one or two of the nine tips I've shared and put them in place for three weeks. Get a proper feel for whether they positively impact your time, your life and your business or not. And if not, don't beat yourself up about it. One of the worst productivity habits I've ever adopted was in January. I got my inbox down to zero which was not a mean feat, it took three days, but I'd read so much about how highly successful people keep their inbox at zero and get it there every day. And sure, I felt productive initially, but then there was this intense pressure to continue keeping my inbox down at zero. And I would get anxiety if I saw emails coming in through the day and if I got up past those double digits. This productivity tip very much negatively impacted me. I was spending so much more of my productive time thinking about emails as well as in my email inbox. And it just didn't work for me. Now what I do instead is I time block my emails. I reply to as many as I can in the time allotted, so an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening. And I start with the highest priority. Go through and star, and if it's not starred, then it's not gonna get answered. Obviously, this is more of a personal inbox. If you have customers that you're managing, then you do need to get through those inquiries. But um, you know, if you're overwhelmed on a personal or you know, founder inbox, then you know, maybe inbox zero will work for you or maybe time blocking will work. It's all about experimentation. So I hope you've taken away at least one tip from this vlog that you're excited to go and implement for yourself. Do report back on how it's working and share your tips too. Cheers.